money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. Tom's out this morning. He will be doing his program live 3 p.m. Eastern time this afternoon. So I'll be in here solo, but we'll jump through the markets. And we got quite a market to kick things off. All the markets in positive territory, but we got a little bit of a sell off going on in the last 20 minutes or so. We'll start it off with the S&P. S&P's right now futures positive by 17 points, trading at 34.78. You see the sell off we had on Friday. We're kind of right in the middle of that trading range. We traded from 3,500 on the dot down to a low of about 34.65, actually made it to a low to be exact of 34.61.25. You see the sell off. Though. Things were positive on the market open. We actually trade to a high of, we'll get that exact print, 3493.75. But since then, we've given off about 16 points. You see the sell off. We're looking at five minute bars, 3477. Right now, in the SP's up about 14 points. Similar action across the board in terms of the NASDAQ and the Dow. The NASDAQ, the sell off on Friday, we're currently trading at 11,851. We made it down to about 11,800 towards the close on Friday. The Dow, 28,469. The lows that we had were about 70 points above that level, call it 28,400. Friday afternoon, gold contract giving back some of the gains we had earlier as well. Gold was up to almost 1924, makes a high of 1923.40. We've currently given up about $15, trading at 1908 right now, back to where we were at about 2 in the morning. Silver up 23 cents, pretty similar action. We trade higher at about 2 a.m. We've given back some of those gains, 24.65 right now in silver. Notes and bonds on the potential for a stimulus deal. Seems like we could start every show we had. Well, not quite, right? But uh, the common theme, we'll call it, a potential stimulus deal. We have yields a bit higher this morning. We're currently trading lower in price. The 10-year, negative almost eight ticks at 138.26. You see the run we've had since about Thursday. Now, I'll pull up the yield in a moment. When we had the 10-year at about 139.14, the yield was about 0 0.7 zero percent now with some lower price we're approaching a yield of about 0 0.78 percent so about eight basis points the yield rising we're sitting at 138.26 in that 10-year 174.08 in the 30-year down 21 ticks and we'll jump over to the vix as we covered in the 10 o'clock update that vix elevated levels as we're seeing the market sell off a bit we have the s p's up just barely 14 points, and you see the VIX. Even with the market in positive territory, the VIX screaming some sell-side anxiety. 28.29, even since the opening bell, we've now risen about 70 cents in the VIX. Elevated premiums coming into 15 days until a presidential election. Uh, we got a, a planned presidential debate this week. Haven't heard whether that's going to progress or not. Uh, on plan as usual, and we got, we'll jump to it, as I mentioned, stimulus. So you have Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, talking about that she wants a deal done by Tuesday. So that would push it two weeks out from a presidential election. Uh, it's not like you can just pass any type of a deal the day before an election. She sets the deadline as the Speaker of the House on her side as that they want it done by tomorrow. They want an answer. President Trump, Secretary Mnuchin. Then you have the debate, though, whether that can go through the Senate. You have the Senate with McConnell pushing their own deal of about $500 billion. If I was a betting man, I would not bet on a deal coming through. But guess what, folks? It is possible. The market pricing in the possibility. What the market is also pricing in, though, when you talk about pricing in possibilities, is pricing in the possibility probably of no deal and the possibility, whether it's a likelihood, you heard Shane on Larry's show possibly talking about uh, the polls. Nonetheless, the polls say pretty pretty sharp statistics in terms of a Democratic win. We all know what happened in 2016. We'll find out in about 15 days from right now is the election. Whether we know exactly the outcome, this could be an election. This will be an election like any, unlike any other. <clears throat> Excuse me, make sure you get that unlike. An election unlike any other 
if we happen to have a close election and some of those swing states cannot begin counting mail-in ballots until the election day itself, presenting the possibility that you need to count those ballots the day of, maybe the following day. If one of those swing states, if the election is close enough that they may determine the outcome, very possible scenario that we could have. Uh, no answer on election night looming to the next day. Nonetheless, a little bit of a sell-off, folks. As I was mentioning, you now get the S&Ps down to a price point of 34.85. We're going to put this and zoom it back out just to see where we're trading. I mean, things are things are escalating pretty quickly here on the open. Probably not what you wanted to see in terms of rehashing where we were on Friday. The number we'll be looking for on support, as in holding where we were on Friday, you're only about five points away from that in the S&Ps right now, trading at 34.70, Friday's close of about 34.65. All right, what else we got going on in the market? Jumping over to headlines out there. I mentioned the 10-year yield. Here's your 10-year yield. Now, as the market has pulled back, We've seen the price of the 10-year. We're going to correlate it all here. Let me slide down. You see the spike we've had, actually, up about four ticks since the market sold off. So as I mentioned, you had the 10-year yield about 0.78. We're now sitting 0.767% for that 10-year yield. Of course, we're talking about stimulus to stimulate the economy, which has fared uh, some harsh, harsh statistics in terms of COVID, in terms of the shutdown. Excuse me. But the numbers here in terms of cases in the U.S., I went over it on my program. Uh, we always hear about the, the second wave, the third wave. We're, <clears throat> we're tired. We're growing tired. We're all growing tired. It's human nature. We want to get back to normal. We're social creatures. Um, we know that this thing is still out there. Hopefully you social distance, wear a mask. That can help all of this. But the number is pretty harsh. We just had a number, folks, on Friday in terms of October 16th. I'll get it on the chart. 70,000 plus cases to, to be exact in terms of what the Times has. 70,451. We're dealing with a seven-day average of about 56,000. We were just dealing with a seven-day average of 35,000 on September 13th. So you're talking about basically five weeks and you're up, what is that, a 60% increase in the daily case totals. Uh, deaths usually lagging case totals to some degree. Care getting much better in terms of death tolls, death uh, rates decreasing, but still not what you want to see. If you want to see the economy open back up, that is a sharp, sharp rise. And we're within about 5,000 cases of all-time highs. That high, is July 16th, 75,682. As I mentioned, we're above 70,000 as of Friday. Weekend statistics, you have a lot of variance there that comes in over the weekend. We'll see how those numbers shake out, but not what you want to see. And where in terms you see it, uh, a map here I got on CNBC, they just kind of correlated where we were in different months as this progressed april the first breakout some of the northeast areas right you had may we had uh, our our breakouts in terms of florida in the in the summer july you had texas arizona out there california now what's going on though the midwest just quite a sharp rise in terms of the numbers being hit in terms of the states being hit uh these are numbers per 100,000 residents, okay? You're the Dakotas, Montana, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Utah, Iowa, Idaho, Missouri, Wyoming, those Midwest states, sharp, sharp numbers. Uh, you zoom it down to Florida, 12.6. Delaware, Massachusetts, 9.6. But stark numbers there. Wear a mask, social distance, folks. It's not political. And make sure you get out there and vote, whether you're voting by mail, like the president, like myself. Uh, whether you're voting early, early voting starting today in Florida, or you're voting on Election Day. Wear a mask, social distance. You can vote on Election Day as well, as long as you're not high risk. I would be perfectly fine with that. Stay tuned, folks. Come right If back. you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. S&P is positive by 17. We got the NASDAQ positive by 51. Dow positive by 100 on the markets. That is on an hourly. Zooming it back in on the five minute. You see a little bit of a bounce off those lows that we got. We're about 10 points off the lows we just made in the, the S&Ps in the last 10 minutes, trading at 34.79. You may see some volatility today, folks. You may see some volatility for the next two or three weeks. Uh, a presidential election, as we said, unlike none other, the VIX above 28, 28.10. We got earnings season kicking off in a big way this week. We're going to go over some of those companies coming out this week, including the likes of Tesla and Netflix. We'll go over those in a moment, but starting things off, an article I was checking out here on Bloomberg over the weekend. So talking about speculators reversing big NASDAQ shorts, some pretty interesting stats here. Speculators flip positive on NASDAQ futures in near record purchase. So net speculative speculative positions in the NASDAQ 100 mini contract surge by the most in more than 13 years in the week through October 13th. All right, that's Remarkable when you talk about 13 years, folks, and you see the chart they have up there. They're talking about non commercial net positions in the NASDAQ 100 mini. You see the spike that we just had the year of 2020. Now, what it's also going to talk about is we had quite the spike lower. Uh, speculators large reverse the large net short NASDAQ futures position. So that's where we were in the short. We come back, but that could be, and they talk about. Now, let's pull up the NASDAQ to see, of course, where we are, and I'm getting some audio from that tab, so I'm gonna close that. Uh, the NASDAQ, putting things on the daily, and there you see kind of even this run up here, right? Talking about the week ended, October 13th, okay? Talk about some correlation, folks. The NASDAQ 100, all right? The micro, you go from a price point on October 7th of 11,208, and you trade up by the 13th, okay? The 13th to a high of 12,249. Did you get that, folks? That's a thousand 
points, more than a thousand points, 9%, almost 10%. Now we've sold off a bit since then, the high of 12,466 back towards the beginning of September. We almost got it all back. We're trading at 11,837, but pretty interesting when you look in there, where did my article just go? I closed it. Uh, in terms of that net short position though, reversing to a net long NASDAQ stock spiking higher, but we've pulled back a bit from that run, 11,837 right now. All right, what else we got going on in terms of the markets? News out there, we'll jump into it. Speaking of those tech stocks, the iPhone 12. So interesting stuff here. If you're an iPhone owner, I have an iPhone 8 Plus. That's what I got right now, and I will be upgrading. I was kind of waiting. My phone still works relatively well. My home button makes a few clicking sounds that I'm not a, uh, that I'm not a fan of. But nonetheless, uh, I will be trading it in because uh, I want that 5G phone. It's time for me to upgrade. I've had this phone for about three years or so. Um, and that's what they're talking about in terms of carriers really providing some, some deals for the first go around. Now, of course, the best deals out there are signing up with a new carrier, right? If you're thinking about transferring carriers, changing, maybe going from Verizon to, to AT&T, AT&T to Verizon, uh, Sprint, T-Mobile, one of those. Great time to do it if you're in the market for a iPhone. Some of the deals, I mean, you're talking about um, for people with AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon, an iPhone costs $800. If you want one unlocked, that's $825. But guess what? Customers can get even bigger discounts for new devices. They're willing to commit to monthly payments for the next few years. And if they get unlimited plans, AT&T can get as much as $800 off an iPhone 12, nearly the entire cost. Now, you're locked in for two to three years, but most people, folks, um, are, are probably going to have a phone in perpetuity. So you're going to be paying a payment. And even when you're trading in your phone, I believe for the iPhone, and we're with T-Mobile, uh, I believe for the iPhone 8, you can get somewhere between about $500 to $600 as a refund. Now, the way they do this, though, is it is a rebate over the course of about two and a half years. And I'm going to try and see if they talk you into um, what they do here, because it's 30 months is how they break it down. Um and there's a lot of text in here, but that is the way they break it down in terms of current subs current subscribers. And I know this deal with T-Mobile, at least, you're able to get a rebate depending on the phone you have, okay? And then that is applied over the period of 30 months. So if you that way, if you uh, decide to leave, you don't get the full rebate. If you stay for the two and a half years, you do get the full rebate. Pretty interesting, though, as this is a huge go around for them in terms of a super cycle with Apple. I got up here, Apple, talk about a 382 re retracement right to the 105 price point, basically, from that run up. I mean, quite a pullback, $25 pullback from 137 down to 105. That's almost a 20% haircut. Apple is taking this drawing off there. Apple now sitting at about 119.20. We're basically flat today. You see the elevation we had yesterday. It spikes higher and then kind of gives it up after the hype pre, that's Monday, leading into their Apple event. But the Apple event, of course, we'll zoom it in. A little bit of a sell-off from Tuesday. We're trading at about 119.29. Reminds me a little bit of Amazon. Similar deal. Uh, we'll put this on a daily as well. Amazon, Prime Day, two days last week. You spike higher on Monday in anticipation and basically give it all up. We almost made it to 3,500, all-time highs of Amazon 3,552, currently trading at 3,253. Pretty remarkable that we're gonna be in, what's it, Cyber Monday, Black Friday. It's gonna be holiday season before we know it. And jumping around, I got another Amazon article up here. Talk about fake reviews. Be very aware, folks, when you're shopping. Uh, uh, there is so much money to be made off of selling products online that there's always going to be an incentive, always, excuse me, to be faking how good a product is. I rely very heavily on a lot of reviews, but I'm always jumping around. Even when it comes to restaurants, right, I'm jumping around to Yelp. Even if I'm on the internet, you find Google. Google has their own restaurant reviews. I might pull up Yelp. Even when I'm looking at movies to rent, if you got a movie, you're scanning Netflix, maybe you're scanning Disney, maybe you're scanning Prime. I'm always jumping to IMDb, maybe Rotten Tomatoes. You got a few different feels uh, because I don't trust, I don't, where, do, where do the reviews come from for Netflix? Does anybody know? Netflix always seems like every Netflix original is rated like four or five stars. Not quite the same scenario when you jump over to IMDb, but pretty interesting here to get into the numbers. 420 million Amazon reviews 
assessed by the monitoring service Fake Spot Inc. Not familiar, but they're quoting them here in the Bloomberg. From March through September, were unreliable, up from 36% in the same period last year. Folks, that's a huge rise. That's like an 18% rise in the number of fake reviews. The rise in fake reviews corresponding with the stampede of online of millions of virus averting shoppers. We've only seen those kind of numbers in Black Friday or Christmas period. So it makes sense, right? Everybody flocking to the online sector. Be aware of that. It's just pretty remarkable. So you got fake spot. They monitor reviews. Amazon, Walmart all uh, awards grades to product write-ups. 40 to 70% of reviews for a given listing are fake. Pretty remarkable. Um, but that's the world we live in, folks. That is for sure. All right, jumping around to other stories out there. Why not? We're going to jump to, it'll be a teaser. We got Chairman Powell saying the Fed has made no final decision on digital currency. So we'll get into that after the break. He was talking out there today. Where is he? He is at a uh, central bank. Nah, we'll find out. I think he's International Monetary Fund, a panel at their annual meeting, committed to carefully and thoughtfully evaluating the potential costs and benefits of a central bank digital currency. I bet they are, folks. The Fed wants to control that money supply. Bitcoin, not going to help them do that. Stay tuned. We'll be right back, folks. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps popping a bit off the lows we just made, up about 20 points on the session right now. Dow up 129. I got a chart of Bitcoin up here. We make a low with the market in March of 42.10. Quite an acceleration we've gotten since then. Zooming things in on the last couple of months. From August at 12,635, we dip below 10,000 briefly, currently trading 11,715 for the price of Bitcoin. We bring that up because, as I mentioned, price of digital currency. Now, Powell, Chairman Powell, he was speaking today at a panel. It's more important for the United States to get it right than to be first. He said on a panel hosted by the IMF during its annual meeting, we are committed to carefully and thoughtfully evaluating the potential costs and benefits of a central bank digital currency for the U.S. economy and payment system. We have not made a decision to issue, issue a central bank digital currency. And as the article talks about that, they've swerved sharply from their previous cautious approach to digital, to digital currencies, embracing a full-scale study on whether one might be suitable for the U.S. Powell said about 80 percent of percent of central banks around the world were exploring the idea. Uh, it's it's probably just a case of that they realize they need you, folks. Um, they were slow to warm to the idea, but their interest picked up after Facebook proposed its own unit of exchange for its users. Central banks from Sweden to Canada and China studying whether their money should have a digital counterpart. Sweden began an e-krona project, project back in 2017. They've issued two reports. The Bank of Canada has launched a formal research project. Bank of Japan said earlier this month it aims to start an early phase experiment. Next year, digital, everything's going digital, folks. No reason why currencies can't be doing the same thing. All right. Speaking about over in Asia, Ant Group wins China approval for Hong Kong IPO plan. China Securities Commission, they gave him the green light for an IPO hearing. Jack Ma's Ant is seeking Hong Kong listing hearing Monday. Now, this is potentially shaping up to be, where's the number in here? Where is it? There we go. The company could raise about $35 billion from the dual listing in Hong Kong and Shanghai at a valuation of at least $280 billion dollars. That's quite a price tag. Ant Group's IPO could surpass Saudi Aramco's $29 billion sale last year, making marking a win for the Hong Kong Stock Exchange that lost many of China's tech stars to U.S. listings. Looks like that's on a path to be the biggest IPO out there. Uh, on the reverse side, Dave & Buster's, they seek liquidity from $500 million junk bond sale. Dave & Buster's, talk about a tough place to be in. Um, if you're worried about germs and spreading of a virus, no matter how careful you are, if you're running around touching machines inside, it seems like that might be one of the more dangerous activities. Doesn't mean you can't do it, but just one of the more dangerous activities. Tough to compete uh, there. And Dave and Buster's looks like they seek liquidity, liquidity from 500 million junk bond sale. And guess what? I just got a notification from my producers that we got the one and only Tom O'Brien, my dad, on the phone. Good morning. What's happening, pal? How you doing? It's going well, man. How are you doing? Good, man. What, did, you, did you sell that market down as soon as it opened? I was going to ask you, man. What were you screen. doing that when you were on the uh, No. Uh, yeah, uh, the volatility, man, right? A quick sell-off, and then even since then, we're up uh, 10 points off of the, the price tag we just made. And, you know, you almost can't overstate. I said in the show, we got 15 days until the election, man. We got stimulus talk. We got earnings in full season this week. Um, so volatility, right. and we get the VIX staying high above 28. And I know your gold contract jumping around today as well. Um, what, what are you looking at besides all that selling on the open? Yeah, that I mean, you know, it seems to me that, you know, I know every day the, the rhetoric is that, yeah, we're going to get a deal done. And now we get a a deadline, evidently, Pelosi put a deadline of uh, midnight tomorrow night. You know, uh, Mnuchin is on his way to to Israel. So the bottom line is, is that, yeah, they'll be talking. But guess what? You know, I, I just don't I just don't see it, you know, before the election. And after the election, yeah. who knows what's going to happen? So I would agree. I uh, said I think it was either yeah. you know the start of this show or, or my show said if I was a betting man, you had to force me on one way or the other, right? I would say yeah, it's probably not going to happen. Um, doesn't mean it can't, but the 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 chips, right. the way they're lined up, two weeks from an election, um, with everything going on, that's a there's a lot. Of, and then you have the Senate with McConnell, and you know there's three parties that have to agree here: the House, the President, and the Senate. And all of those coming together, man, we got a lot of obstacles. No, we do. There's no doubt. And, you know, I just heard you at the Dave and Busters. I mean, that, that you know, it's amazing to me, uh, Tom and folks, is that that a company like that can actually 
raise five hundred million dollars. Now they, they're raising this. Uh, check, check things out. So they're raising five hundred million. It is going to be some kind of a secured loan. I am not. I was trying to hunt this this morning as to what they were securing it with because after they raise this, they're paying off a short-term loan and they're going to have with two hundred ninety-nine million available. But it's like, man, I, I just don't see those those businesses, man. I mean, I don't know how they're going to come back out of it. <laughs> you know, seriously, it's just, yes, it's, it's a different I, world. I, I, Do you know what I, I mean? agree, it's man. A different world. I was trying to get through it, and they don't <clears throat> they don't go through the exact details. And one thing is, they I have the article up here. They say is the notes will be secured by the same subsidiaries that guarantee its terms loan and revolving credit facility. Um, so maybe it's some of those same lenders. Is that how uh, you know? Well, that 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 is the quote right there. Like, okay, what was that? Right. Collateral for the last loan. Exactly. exactly. That, that's 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 the kicker. And. You know, the bottom line is that, uh, you know, Chuck E. Cheese went out of business. I mean, you know, th those those businesses are different, man. It's not like when you were growing up that that was, you know, that was the thing to do. Now now people have phones and they have plenty I of agree. things to do, man. It's tough to compete anyway, right? Whereas kids yeah. in arcade was one of the best spots to go to play all those games. Nowadays, kids as, as young as 10, 12 years old have basically a phone in their hand that can serve and play any game that, a kid could have dreamed of my age or let alone your age, right? No, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I think they've almost, and that's where you see the huge transition that they've become like the social deal where that's why Dave and Buster's, you got the food, right? The hangout, the TVs, maybe you, the parents can watch a game of football on Sunday where the kids go play in the arcade. But right now during COVID, man, that's just tough across the board for sure. Yeah, I did. I did. Oh, hey, did you see the did you see the Buccaneers game by any chance? I sure did, man. Tom Brady, watch out. Wow. That was yeah. with, with Gronkowski. That was awesome seeing that. And I'm, for those that didn't that see it, it was, it was quite a Gronkowski matchup, man. face was worth it, yeah. It was. They had uh, they were playing the um, Green Bay Packers, man, who came in 4-0. I know. And Green Bay went up 10 nothing, I think, and then Tampa Bay scored 38 unanswered points. Um, yeah. Quite, quite a game, man. Quite a game. And, of course, you got the Rays in the World Series, man. So we got the Tampa Bay Lightning, the current Stanley Cup champions. We got the Rays in the World Series against the L.A. Dodgers. The Dodgers haven't won a championship since 1988. Um, and then if the Rays can get it done, all that has to happen is Tom Brady has to close it out for, for, for the Bucks and would have three championships during the year of COVID, man. Now, I'll be rooting for the Patriots, but it's always nice to see Brady doing well, man. Wow. That, that's Isn't that cool? Else, I know. It's, it, we're right there. Yeah. to being, um, If you just said, hey, all that has to happen is Brady has to win the NFL championship and Tampa would have three titles. Uh, if you said that a year ago, what would somebody say to you? <laughs> right? If you said that at any time, what would someone say to you? Exactly. Seriously. Exactly. Seriously. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you okay. calling into the show. And, of course, we look forward to the show. I know you'll be live today at 3 o'clock. We look forward to that, man. Okay, man. Have a great one. Okay, Love man. You, you too. Love you too. Bye. All right, folks, we got the market. We're pulling back yet again. Somebody's selling it off again. We're at 3470 in the S&Ps. We're up positive eight. The NASDAQ going negative on the session. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. s and is positive by 13. NQ's back in the green by just three. Dow up 102. I got a chart here of IBM. IBM positive barely by about 47 cents. Today, we got IBM earnings after the bell tonight. Jumping into the chart. Positive a bit this morning. Putting IBM on a daily. There's your acceleration. Now, check this out, folks. You put it on that. That's quite a downtrend. I didn't do that before this, uh, before this segment. Just happened to have that in terms of looking at charts. Yeah, we might have a pop. But, man, you look at this trend line. You don't have to be a uh, genius chart chartist, a genius uh, statistician, a genius uh, channel master to see the channel on this IBM chart. They'll be coming out with their earnings after the bell in terms of the market. They're pricing in a $4.67 price move for their earnings after the bell tonight all right continuing with the earnings theme quite a week to kick things off we had bank earnings last week started things off pretty solid earnings some of the biggest names out there in terms of this week we'll be looking at netflix there after the bell tomorrow snapchat after the bell tomorrow as well procter and gamble albertson's philip morris lockheed martin before the market Texas Instruments after the market in terms of the big name on Wednesday, Tesla. They'll be coming out with their earnings after the bell as well. We'll jump over to Tesla and Netflix in a moment. Just jumping through some of the other stocks that should be on people's radars that should get the most attention. Chipotle, one of the names that people are always looking at as well. Biogen, they've been in the press recently. Jumping to Thursday, Coca-Cola. We'll get some airlines with Alaska Southwest. American, AT&T, Sirius XM coming out with their numbers on Thursday. Sirius, I'm not sure if they've closed it out or if it's just really close. Resigning Howard Stern to $100 million a year. Now, that $100 million for Sirius, let's jump to them, Sirius. Uh, that includes the pay for his entire staff. I say that almost uh, as in not, not a huge deal, $100 million every single year. If you remember the deal, now this is Sirius, right? Talk about some max pain. And uh, I believe this is when things went crazy with the Howard Stern run. Pretty remarkable. Now, we're talking about many splits going on here. There's some monthly pretty interesting stuff when you look at it there. <clears throat> we'll put it on the five, five minute series at 584. And uh, to put this back on a daily, just to see the context of where we've been from 740 to 411, currently trading about 583. They'll have their numbers out on Thursday. As I mentioned, some of the airlines coming out on Thursday, starting things off, Southwest American Alaska. We also get Intel on Thursday, and then Friday, Bloomin' Brands. They'll be out with their numbers. So tomorrow, Netflix, after the bell, talk about a rocket ship on a daily. <clears throat> Netflix made a low of under 300 briefly in March. We're trading at 524, the analyzed tab. 
$41.56 we got for an expected move for Netflix with their earnings. I mean, $52 would be 10%. So what are we looking at? About an 8% move priced into the options coming out with their numbers. We also have Tesla coming out Wednesday. Tesla pricing in about a $30 move right now on the options. Tesla, $435 down about five bucks. They're pricing in $30. They'll be out with their numbers Wednesday after the bell. Snapchat as well with their numbers expected. More than a 10% move expected. How about that with some volatility? $28 stock in the market pricing in $3.33. Waiting for their earnings. Uh, Snapchat, I believe, coming out on so Tuesday, yes, Tuesday, after the market close, along with Netflix, Texas Instruments, let's take a look at. They're out tomorrow after the bell as well. TXN, pricing in a $6 move, so about a 4% move for Texas Instruments. Putting Texas Instruments, quite an acceleration, from $93 up to $154, right near the all-time highs. And I'm going to jump around, check out this market, folks. I'm going to take this drawing off real quick, remove that so we can zoom it in. This is a daily, all right, we see the daily on the NASDAQ. Check out the 15 minute, five minutes, excuse me, right near the lower end of that. We actually dip below where we were on Friday. That price tag, keep your eye on, 11,800 in the NQs. The S&Ps, that price tag, not quite under that level. We were down below 34.65, currently trading at 34.71. As the market oscillates, how about this VIX? 28.25, staying above 28 for the volatility index, as you may expect as we get some continued volatility. All right, what else we got going on in terms of what is happening jumping through yeah i got covid so we talked about covid a little bit just keep your eye on it i know larry had shane on here talking about the covid numbers uh, you know all i can say folks is just be aware of where we are these are stark numbers that we're in especially when you look at where you are in the country if you're anywhere in the midwest stark numbers in terms of the numbers rising wear a mask when you can social distance when you can it will help Number one, it will help society in terms of the safety of those around you, possibly saving lives and also help with opening back up the economy because these are stark numbers we're dealing with. Just on Friday, we had a, we had a level of 70,451 new cases. The high total record is 75,000 and we are on quite a trajectory with a seven day average of 50 six thousand right now and we were at a low of 34,000 or 35 as of september 13th so you're talking about five weeks we just jumped more than 50 percent on the daily total of those covid numbers and as i mentioned where they're coming the numbers really pretty dramatic in the midwest in terms of number of cases per 100,000 residents you see those states the dakotas montana wisconsin nebraska utah iowa idaho all of them pretty stark numbers in terms of the daily new cases seven day average per 100,000 residents out there all right so jumping around as we see this nasdaq oscillating right we just went from 11,950 we're down about 160 points trading at 11,783 under where we were as of friday and check out some of the action that we had in some of these fang stocks apple shares just traded from above 120 to below 118.50 now we're trading at 118 69 down about 36 cents you even had microsoft shares from 122 to almost 218 amazon shares amazon trading from basically 33.30 down to 32.30 a hundred dollars amazon uh down 1.1 percent right now jumping around to some of the social media facebook talk about a little sell-off from 268 to 263 right now down about one percent as well on facebook shares and we cover netflix similar action though from five i mean look at these moves right netflix from almost whoops 540 down to 527 we made it to a low of 525 netflix down about six tenths percent but as we mentioned it just moved from the open about $10, but that's nothing compared to the move that we might get on earnings, which is about $42 options are pricing in to Netflix. All right, what else we got going on? Checking in some of the stocks I like to keep my eye on. Disney, 125.95. That was the acceleration they got last week on the news of the reorganization, focusing on streaming first, didn't last long. Disney trades back to kind of that price level, 126, but I do like the premise that they are focusing on a streaming first focus, because that is 100 million subscribers, folks. You better believe that that might be the focus of your business when you're talking about nine figures, 100 million people paying for their Disney Plus service, whether you got it as signing up for Verizon 
whatever it is, those are your clients, and Disney going to be focusing on them. 126, some of the ride-hailing companies, Uber shares pulling back as well. We're up today, but backing off a bit from where it's been, 34.14. And how about the cannabis stocks? They had all the hype last week to 2013, backing off a bit at about 18.18 for Canopy. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back after the break. We got S&Ps under 35, under 34.70, currently up seven points, but barely hanging on to those gains. Stay tuned, folks. NASDAQ negative by 11, Dow positive by 49. Be right back in three minutes to finish up the show. Stay tuned. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Talking about that super cycle iPhone 12 for Apple. Apple's first day pre-orders for iPhone 12 surpassed the iPhone 11 top analyst estimates. They say that Apple sold 2 million iPhone models in the first 24 hours, up from 800,000 units for the iPhone 11, and it should. The iPhone 12 better do better than the iPhone 11. This is the 5G super cycle, but nonetheless, pretty big numbers in terms of what they're pushing out in 24 hours. AAPL is their symbol. You did see the spike higher, right, coming into the market, but like everything else, especially in the NASDAQ, selling off a bit, you got Apple down about three-tenths percent today all right what other stocks we got going on how about fedex and ups we'll wrap it up with fedex 
up 2.2%, we'll call it, reaching a high of 291.22. Putting this on a daily, well, that's a three-year weekly. My goodness, right? But check out the daily, pretty stark as well. We make it to a low of $88. We're making all-time highs, I believe all-time highs. Let's back it up. All-time highs on FedEx at 291.22 today. And while we got it on the monthly UPS, same deal, all-time highs. Well, that's the month. Are we at all-time highs today? Nope, not quite. Pretty close, though. 175.90. Both of these companies, the report's coming out saying, guess what, folks? If you're a shipper and you need big supplies of shipping, as in if you need to ship your products in the holiday season coming up, well, you might have to look elsewhere because FedEx and UPS basically already booked up with their holiday shipping plans. Nonetheless, FedEx, talk about a rocket ship. As I mentioned, you almost triple 90. You do triple from 90 to 290, right on the dot. And UPS from the lows of 82, more than a double to 175.96. And we got uh, Black Friday coming down the line. It's holiday season, prime day last week. Remarkable action. Stay tuned, folks. We got Fast Market coming up next. Basil Chapman live at noon. Steve Rhodes with the Trader's Edge live at 1 o'clock. Dave White with the Power of Trading Hour live at 2. And Tom O'Brien, my dad, live at 3 o'clock. S&P is positive by 